What you're about to watch is a video that I've actually been planning for about a year now and it covers uh, a story that's been going for about three years or so. It's quite something. It was quite something to plan. It's something I'm really excited to talk about and that is the slug liners from FX. Now a lot of you will know that I've been deeply involved with this and so I feel it my duty to just help you guys out in understanding the history behind this, the purpose of why we decided to work on this and then also for me to give you a whole lot of advice on how to correctly set up your gun, um, a little bit of the theory of you know what works and what doesn't so that you guys can correctly um, choose the correct slugs and, and choose the correct barrel length, choose the correct, correct weight and diameter, all of that stuff. Um, we're going to break this video up into two sections. The first section is going to be some, some history, starting right at the beginning when this whole idea to make these came about um, up until now. We're going to cover all of that. That might even answer quite a lot of your questions just in itself. And then we're going to move on to uh, more of a tutorial where it's, it's going to be kind of like a questions and answer session although I'm going to be obviously uh, preempting the questions you may have and giving you all the information that I can so that you guys can not stumble your way through trying to set this up. I know this is new for most of you that have been just shooting pellets for a long time so it's going to take some trial and error on your side but I'm going to help you as much as I can. So starting with the history, where did this all begin? Who came up with this crazy idea uh, to shoot slugs out of a pellet gun. The answer is that it wasn't me and it wasn't FX. People have been doing this for a very long time. Um, I want to give credit actually before we even start with this with uh, Huben, American Air Arms, Sumatra. There's a lot of companies out there that have been making slug guns for a long time. The reason I think this is different though is because the guns that are going to be we're going to be shooting slugs out of the Crown the Impact, the Dreamline, stuff like that are guns that are not made to shoot slugs. If you shoot out of a Huben, you're shooting out of a gun that's made to shoot slugs. Um, a gun like the American Air Arm Slayer, you set that gun up to shoot slugs. Those guns are absolutely awesome, but so far, the guns that have been associated with slugs have been mostly big bore guns. These are small bore guns. These are standard pellet guns that we wanted to give the option to people and we wanted to enable them to, to do something different if they wanted to. And the beauty of this is you can switch out your liner, you can shoot pellets and slugs. You don't have to choose whether you want your you know, big ball beast or whether you want your pellet gun. You can have both now. Um, so what happened was I went to the FX factory just before IWA 2017. That's where the story kind of began. Um, I went to the factory. I was testing a whole lot of barrels and the JSB Monster redesigned two two pellets had basically just been sent to FX. The rest of the world didn't even know about them yet. They weren't even announced yet, but FX had some samples to test. So I started testing them out of just normal FX pellet liners at the time. And at the 40 meter test range, they were stacking right on top of each other, extremely tight. I took them home, I tested the BC, and I found that the BC was significantly higher than a normal 18 grain pellet. And around the same time, I had been starting to shoot a lot with firearms and in the firearms world when it comes to long range shooting I noticed that ballistic coefficient and the aerodynamic properties of a bullet at long range the ability to retain velocity and retain energy and buck the wind comes first it comes before group size it comes before precision because at the end of the day if you're hunting at long range and you're hunting in conditions like winds, which you can't always predict, accuracy is more important than precision. And it brought about this really important question. Why are we not doing the same thing in the air gun world? Why are we sitting with technology such as Diablo pellets, which are 100 years old, um, that were designed for smooth bore barrels? Why are we using the same technology? And why is such a limiting factor holding us back so much? So I was wrestling with these questions at the time. And I actually, in one of my videos, I think it was in... April or May of 2017, I actually uh, actually brought this question up in one of my videos and I predicted this. I said the next big step in air gun technology is going to be the projectile because we're coming to a point where the, the, the advances in technology we're making are all got to do with efficiency, it's all got to do with valving, it's all got to do with um, you know refining the technology we already have but if our projectile stays the same we're not really going to take a massive step forward anytime soon. 
I'm hoping that that's kind of the direction that the air gun uh, industry or technology is moving with higher ballistic coefficient pellets. We've got the technology for many shots per fill. We've got the technology with carbon fiber bottles where you can get, carry a large air capacity. The valve design is getting much better. We've got the barrel technology now to shoot longer bullets, heavier bullets, better BC bullets. I'm really hoping that that's the next step in uh, air gun technology. I think it will really go a long way in improving our ability to actually extend our range, uh, extend our comfortable range with high VC pellets or bullets. Um, you can really reach out there and not be affected so much by the wind. So I'm really looking forward to the future. <laughs> so I'm basically made it my goal to find a solution to this problem. I knew that a pellet was not an optimum design for long range shooting. I knew that for a fact and I wanted to go about changing that. So what I actually did was I got as many slugs as I could find. This includes like some of H&N's more slug type projectiles back then like the Rabbit Magnum and stuff like that. Um, I found basically everything I could find at the time. I tested them through various barrels and I just wasn't happy with the results. I actually at one point went to the FX factory with slugs that I'd got somebody to make for me. Somebody who actually I really appreciate his help because he did his very best. We unfortunately just didn't know what to make at the time but somebody designed slugs for me, made them, tested them at the FX factory and it was super super frustrating because we literally watched slugs spiral completely out of control and shoot a group like this at 50 as opposed to the pellets that were going through a thumb hole. It was really frustrating and disheartening but I, I still believe that this was possible and um, this changed completely when I went to Extreme Bench Rest 2017 and Nick Nielsen was there and Nick Nielsen who obviously has a lot more knowledge than me on the topic of slugs and who's been making them for a very long time gave me a 22 caliber sample pack with 23 grain slugs. I took these slugs home, I tested them out of my, par my, my pellet liner and I, I noticed through the scope cam, I filmed them, filmed them in a thousand frames per second, I noticed they were flying completely straight. Every now and again there'd be a bit of a wobble and that's something we'd sort out later but for the most part these things were working. They weren't quite at pellet accuracy, they're nowhere near what we have today out the slugs but they were shooting groups like this at 25 and for me that was a major victory and it showed me that this endeavor was entirely possible and it really lit my fire. So what I did was I proposed the idea to FX um, and at first FX weren't too keen on it because they had also done tests with other slugs. They'd seen how badly the slugs I brought there before had, had worked but FX are the kind of people that are forward thinking. They have a philosophy that they should always be one step ahead even if they don't have the full picture and the technology is not good enough to release yet. They have the philosophy that they should always be looking at the next step and looking at the future so that when the technology does come for those things to happen that they are ahead of everyone else. It was this forward-thinking philosophy that made me approach them in the first place. Um, I felt like I wanted to work with a company that wanted to move towards the future and that wasn't stuck in old ways like many other PCP manufacturers unfortunately are and Another thing was the fact that they have the technology in their factory to do, to make many changes in a very short amount of time. Many other PCP manufacturers do not make barrels in-house, so that's the first problem. We'd have to, I'd actually have to work with a barrel manufacturer, and that would mean that I'd have to have, be continually working on a gun that's able to adapt to the changes that are happening in the barrel and to fine tune, which is already a problem. But also, FX's machines are capable of literally making any kind of barrel design you can in a very short amount of time, which means that we could move through stages and phases very quickly without waiting for new tooling, and we could test different hypotheses and different ideas right there in the factory within short amounts of time, and that's what I needed. So that was the one thing, but the, the biggest thing was the fact that I trusted FX. I knew that any ideas that I brought to the table would not be snubbed and they would not be stolen. This was a partnership and I'm really, I've been really happy up until today with the way things have worked. They've um, allowed me to contribute ideas. They've been very open with me. Um, they've invested in the project and I've got to really punt Frederick Axelson here because Frederick Axelson, although not fully believing in the project at first, 
still gave me the freedom and still invested in me as a as a free thinker and as someone who had ideas and let me run with it and if it wasn't for that who knows this problem this project probably would never have worked out after kind of getting the thumbs up from fx on this we we moved towards sort of a, a research phase um what we did was before I even went to the FX factory, I did a very intensive study of all kinds of different barrels um, using the slugs that Nick Nielsen had given me and using pellets as well. Um, I, I took CZ barrels, I took Lothar Walther 12 groove barrels, took Lothar Walther polygonal barrels, and I took FX barrels. I pushed pellets and slugs through them. I checked um, how the pellets and slugs interacted with the barrels. I looked at them under microscopes. I wrote long, uh, you know, kind of theories on why certain barrels shot them well why certain barrels didn't shoot them well and what needed to change i did a lot of research and i took all this research with me to the fx factory with long lists of tests that i wanted to do on these um, barrels and on these projectiles and the beauty of it was that i was able to thanks to fx's barrel machine i was able to actually uh, make minor changes to let's say for example i wanted to test land groove dimensions i could adjust the lands and grooves on that barrel i could test it and i could see whether it was improving or getting worse and i could find where the optimum land groove dimension was i could then test the lead i could see where, how long the chamber must be i could test whether the slug must be jammed to the lands or have some kind of a jump i could test the choke i could test everything and i could move through it really quickly and we could find solutions very quickly and that's the beauty of it if any other barrel manufacturer was doing this it would take a lot of time and you would probably have to have 90 percent of your your theories basically proven in your head before you try it otherwise it would take too long the beauty of this was that someone like me who has no crazy amount of experience with this can bring semi ideas or semi theories to the table and one by one tick them off in a sort of a, a trial and error way which was which was really really awesome so we were able to test variations and we were able to come to many conclusions during that week and get pretty darn close to the final product by the end of that one week not knowing that it would take a long time to actually perfect things but we were getting there what we wanted to do though the, the, one of the big things was that we wanted to make specific barrels for pellets and specific barrels for liners a lot of the barrel manufacturers out there have taken a, a, a jack of all trades approach but what happens when you do that is you have a jack of all trades but master of none unfortunately these barrels are not necessarily uh, optimized for whatever projectile they're shooting they're made so that the end user can choose whatever pellet he wants and it's likely to shoot decently what we wanted to do is we wanted to cater barrels to specific projectiles so that you can get the best results out of that combination so yes it might cost you a little bit more and you might be restricted to uh, one projectile design for that particular barrel but you, you're going to know that that projectile is going to shoot well and that was what we wanted to do we wanted to get the best out of the system from here you know after we've kind of proven a lot of these theories i went back to south africa in south africa i had the freedom of testing these barrels outdoors at long range which you can't do in, in sweden because of the muzzle energy restrictions i was able to test in strong winds which could potentially destabilize a projectile and um, i was able to really put things through their paces through high speed cameras and uh, you know, lab radars, testing BC deterioration over, over long distances, all kinds of stuff. And we found quite a few shortfalls. Okay, the barrel was a big improvement from the original pellet barrel, but the, the shortfalls were that the first edition, the first prototype of the slug liner that we made, we found that you, it would shoot a really tight group and then it would throw one off. There'd be flyers where you'd find a bit of a wobble. Um, it turns out that this was... Uh, something to do with the choke the choking method was incorrect the choke diameter was fine but the method in which it was done was was causing issues there was some fouling that was causing the odd slug to be thrown off well actually this was a design flaw uh, first and foremost what else the other thing we found was that there were barrel to barrel inconsistencies so even though the actual dimensions and everything of, of the barrels were the same they'd shoot slightly differently so there you have a, a, a manufacturing flaw that wasn't actually picked up in the pellet liners because the pellet liners are way more forgiving the last thing we found is that there was a flaw in the the, the design of the slug the hollow points were too small they did not expand there was a terminal performance issue 
and the lead was a bit harder and it wasn't ideal for the barrels we were shooting them out of. So that was a, an issue with the projectile. Um, so back to FX factory, just before Extreme Bench Rest 2018. So this is a few months later after a lot of testing and I was there for a whole week basically at the factory. Uh, the factory got a new barrel material which had a slightly larger dimension which was better suited we thought to the slugs. So we were able to test this. There's slightly less friction in the barrel which obviously helped with the fouling as well. Um, we also got new slugs from Nick Nielsen that were slightly softer so it was better for our testing and um, the new knowledge we had obviously from the testing in South Africa we were able to then apply and fine tune the barrels at the factory to make minor, minor improvements which obviously every slight thing, uh, every small thing moves things better. We saw the group start to tighten up, we saw flies disappear and we actually thought that group sizes like maybe three quarters of an inch at 50 were a really good group size until the 11th hour, literally the last day of our testing just before extreme bench rest when we suddenly made a minor change to the choking method um, note not the the dimensions of the choke just the choking method and we literally saw the group tighten up into one hole and at that moment we knew that this was something that we'd stumbled upon that was really big um, we we're a bit bummed that we have to fly off to extreme bench rest and and not actually get the chance to test this further but we knew we'd stumbled upon something big we made notes of that and from here you know that was pretty much the final product that we came up with there and those barrels you will have seen from my hunting videos since then they are completely spot on um you know sub moa at 100 sub moa even in some cases at 200 they are really really awesome so two different impacts two different power settings two different barrels two different weight slugs and two groups that are shot you know shot after shot through the scope cam so you can't tell me that i'm doing any funny business with you um, and this is what it looks like I first put five shots on this target over here just to make sure that I was on target so I could try get this um, slugs near the middle of the target and they were absolutely spot on um, that's five shots over there I'm guessing that's about two inches at group and you can see it's vertical dispersion is really good under an inch it's just the horizontal dispersion which is um, a little bit side to side and that's to be expected we've got a a um, wind that's blowing between five and nine miles an hour here so there will be a bit of change in how it spreads from side to side um, and then here's our two main groups we shot here top one that was with the 23 grand Nielsen slugs I put my hand next to it so you can get an idea of how uh, what the size of that is nice perfectly round holes which means the slugs are facing face forward spot on um, and I'd say that's probably an inch and a half but I'll measure that properly. And this one, this group's maybe slightly, slightly bigger. This is with the 26 grains, and point of aim was over there, but really not that much of a difference. Um, the only difference between these two groups in terms of, um, you know, uh, this one, because these slugs are heavier, they have a higher sectional density. Um, I only had to dial 0.7 mils for the crosswind, whereas this one had to dial one mil for the crosswind. So it was a slight difference. But I'm really happy with those groups. Let's take them home and measure them and let's bring this review to a close. The final test on the slug liners happened in January. We knew we'd had the final product. What I wanted to do um, is basically ensure that FX could make an entire batch of these barrels, as in like 100, 200, 300 barrels, and make sure that every single one of them was the same. I don't want these barrels to be leaving the factory and going out there and people know that I've worked on it and my name gets tainted because someone gets a bad barrel. I want to make sure that every single barrel that comes out that factory is exactly the same because I know that if that barrel comes out the way that I've seen them come out, I know that they are really, really good and I want you guys to be able to experience what I've experienced at long range with these barrels. Um, the only thing we changed basically was that we knew that the Impact Mark II was going to be announced in a few months and I knew that the Impact Mark II was going to be slightly more powerful. So what I did was I actually installed an aftermarket plenum from Ernest Rowe and a high power kit from Ernest Rowe who's FX's head technician and this kind of imitated what you are going to see out the Impact Mark IIs, in other words more power. And what I did was 
we changed the twist rate slightly on the 700 millimeter variant of the slug liner to allow for longer heavier slugs to be shot we knew that people once they had access to the impact mark ii with more power would want to push the weights higher and do that so what we did was we increased the twist rate slightly by like uh you know two inches you may be surprised to hear this but slugs are actually quite forgiving with twist rates if they are designed well you can shoot slugs out of twist rates that are pretty slow and as long as this, the slug is a shape that is uh, dynamically stable in the air it will actually write itself really well so i got good good groups with slower twist rates even with very heavy slugs but what i found though was when i i shot past the lab radar i found that the bcs of the slugs that were uh, shot out of slightly slower twist rates were actually worse and that indicates that there was a slight wobble or a slight yaw that the slugs weren't flying completely straight and that can happen sometimes your barrel shoots the slugs very accurately but they're not completely straight or you know they've got a slight wobble that doesn't affect precision what you want is to get the best bc you can you know that's the whole point of shooting slugs in the first place so a slightly faster twist rate gave us that and so if you buy a 700 millimeter uh, smooth twist x uh, slug liner you're going to be able to shoot slugs up to about 40 grain ernest rowe who's fx's head technician was shooting 40 grain slugs out of his gun uh, with a 700 millimeter liner and he was getting really good results at like 73 foot pounds at 200 yards so that was the idea behind that but i was happy with the way that the the barrels were coming out the factory every single barrel that we made during that one week period i was there at the factory every single barrel that came out of that machine was exactly exactly the same shot exactly the same groups you do have to do your part obviously so it took some time to set the gun up to get optimum performance but once we set the gun up and once we had uh, set the barrel machine up every single barrel that came out there i think we made about 100 barrels every single barrel shot exactly the same okay so you're gonna want to see this this is the latest barrel we've been working on as of what is it january 2019 i'd maybe call it the final version because we made the decision on the 700 millimeter barrel just to change the twist rate a little bit faster um, because of the let's say the new options that are becoming available for the impact with you know more powerful hammer springs larger plenum stuff like that which is going to give it more power we decided to give people the option to shoot heavier slugs if they want so the faster twist rate on the new 700 millimeter barrel is not necessarily ideal for anything lighter than let's say like 28 grains you're not going to see any benefit in fact it might even be worse because you get more you're going to get more spin drift but um for anything heavier like for example this is a 28 grain slug you're going to expect results like this that's five shots 100 yards next to my thumb fantastic that where's it now there that's five shots at 100 yards next to my thumb there's five shots at 100 yards next to my thumb that is just insane it's basically four shots through the same hole and one just a little bit higher and that's ridiculous the crazy thing there is i actually used two different kinds of lead in the slugs and the point of impact with was within a centimeter same weight but the harder lead those slugs were traveling 20 feet per second slower so even with the 20 feet per second change and the slug gripping the barrel slightly differently it's still the same result tiny tiny groups and i could not be happier with, with that that is awesome so that's the history of the smooth thrust x slug diners how they came about the idea behind it and the, the evolution from first stage to where we are today with a final product I've learned a lot during this process mostly about how slugs and the inside of the barrel interact with each other and what's needed for for good performance um, there's a lot I can't tell you as I said there's a lot of industry secrets here that I can't share with you but what I do want to do in this next tutorial section is to help you on your side obviously you get the barrel you install it in your gun but you need your set to set your gun up to shoot it and you need to select the right slugs it's tricky and something new for all of us people have been shooting pellets for 100 years there's a lot of information out there on how to get the best performance but slugs are fairly new so i want to give you a kickstart so in this next section we are going to have a discussion i'm going to answer a lot of your questions through a few sections coming up i'm going to put an index down below obviously so you can find something specific if you want to do that 
but let's get to it. Let's answer these questions. Let's help you get the best results you can. So the first question that most people ask is, what makes a slug liner different to a pellet liner? Um, the answer is there's a lot of things and I can't give you all the exact details about everything because that would give a lot away about all the things we've worked on that we feel like we're one step ahead of everyone else on. Um, but let's go through a few concepts with you. The land groove dimensions. Obviously your lands and grooves are important because that's the part that engages with your projectile the whole way. And a lot of the barrels that have been uh, tested and stuff with pellets are obviously quite different because a pellet can, can give way a little bit and it can obviously, like the skirt for example, is quite a bit bigger than the, the, um, the barrel is itself and the skirt can adapt. A slug can't adapt. A slug is a solid, it's uh, stuck there. So you have to design the barrel to be able to be optimized for something that shape. What we found was the FX pellet liners were, were a lot tighter and that was the issue I was seeing at first when I shot the first batch of Nielsen slugs out my pellet liners. Um, the, the, firstly, there was a lot of friction, but secondly, the slug was getting distorted. This has negative effects in flight, firstly, because it's not completely round. It's not good for the slug's flight, but it's also not good for the way that the slug engages the barrel. You can have a lot of fouling, you can have um, a lot of friction that's uneven, it just caused a lot of problems. So what, what we did with the slug liner was quite simply, we made the lands shallower so that they're not digging into the, the slug as much. So that's one of the first things. Um, the other thing we did was that we adjusted the twist rate, obviously. Now, as I said, you'll be surprised at how forgiving twist rates can be with different projectiles. You probably will hardly see the difference. Where you will see the difference though, is at long ranges, especially when you've got a wind. Um, a w if you've got a twist rate that's too fast with pellets, you're gonna see horizontal uh, dispersion from something like aerodynamic jump, and you're gonna see possibly pellets even destabilizing if those the wind causes uh, gyroscopic precession and mutation, which is something I'll talk about in another video. It's a whole topic in itself. Um, but a slug is very different. Um, a slug obviously needs a slightly faster twist rate than pellets do. And what we were able to do is we were able to find the optimum twist rate for various slugs and produce the barrels with those twist rates so you get the best result you can um, without seeing over stabilization or under stabilization. Um, the other thing we did was obviously change the choke. Now, I'm not gonna give you information about this because this is one of the, the big breakthroughs we had, but basically the choke is slightly different on this barrel. That's all you need to know. Um, I know a lot of you have been saying that slugs barrels that shoot slugs don't need to be choked at all well i can tell you for a fact that the smooth twist x barrels do you we tested everything i'm telling you now if there's no choke there's no hope <laughs> for these barrels um many other barrels like tj barrels uh, hammer forged barrels that are in the american air arms guns they are unchoked and they shoot very very well but obviously those are, the barrel profile is completely different. The surface area of the lands is completely different. The shape of the lands and grooves are completely different. So you can't really compare them. What I will tell you is that these barrels do need a choke. But because of the shallow lands, the choke has no negative effect on the, the, the slug. A lot of you will think that a choke will distort a slug a lot. No, I've pushed slugs through the barrels. I've shot slugs into water and clay and, and looked at you know, if the slug's distorted at all, I can tell you now you can hardly even see um, the marks on the slugs. The only time you can see the, the marks on the slugs is if your slug is rusty. <laughs> if it's got uh, surface debris on it, you'll see the, the areas where the lands have kind of pushed that off. But in general, you cannot even see the difference in shape. And that's what makes these barrels unique because I can tell you now, in any other barrel, you would see a very clear mark from the lands on the slug. Can you shoot pellets out of a slug liner and vice versa? Yes, you can. And you might be very surprised at how well the one shoots or how well the other shoots when you switch them around. And if you're not too fussy about performance of whichever other one you're shooting, then you can go ahead and just use the same barrel for both. Um, you're not gonna find that one is drastically different to the other. Um, as I said, it's, it's these minor differences for people like me who want to be able to take crazy long shots and get repeatability every single time this is where this matters for us for example i 
tested JSB monsters out of this exact barrel, actually my 700 millimeter slug liner that I'm currently using. They shot extremely well at high speeds, literally pellet on pellet at 100 yards. It was actually pretty insane. However, I know that if there's a strong crosswind, the, the twist rate that's not optimized for those pellets is gonna to be too fast and I'm gonna see aerodynamic jump, in other words, up and down movement and I'm gonna see spin drift, and this is gonna be a killer when it comes to competition, for example. If I have a crosswind in competition that I don't uh, see coming, it's not only gonna blow my pellet sideways, it's gonna blow it up or down as well. You're gonna lose points that way, so it's not ideal. I would choose a different barrel if I wanted to focus on the JSP Monsters. As I said, it may be different for me than some of you. Some of you are just Mining enthusiasts, for me, this is my job. So I want to have the best equipment possible, but if you don't want to spend the extra money on a completely separate liner, just get one liner for whichever projectile you think you're going to be shooting most. And I think you'll be, you know, decently happy with the results you get from other projectiles at the same barrel as well. The next big question is, which slug should I shoot at my slug liner? This is an extremely important question because I can tell you straight, if you shoot the wrong slugs, you're gonna get terrible results. It's gonna be a complete waste of your time and you might as well just not get the slug line at all. So my main advice to you would be to get either Nielsen Specialty Ammo Slugs, which are what I'm using, uh, Rat Sniper Slugs, which I've also used, which are absolutely incredible, or I've also heard that the Varmint Knocker Slugs are good. Um, so those three brands are really good and the only thing they have in common is that they are either 217 or 218 caliber and they have a 2S Ojav. Those two things seem to be the key to getting good performance out the slugs. Um, as for which you should choose out of 217 or 218, um, we've had good results with both. The 218s I think are a better size for your barrel, but the 218s come with a slight drawback in that there is a little bit more friction in the barrel so you're going to lose a bit of velocity. Um, my barrel just happens, actually all of my barrels just happen to shoot the 217s extremely well so that's a bonus for me because I'm getting good performance with less friction but I would really suggest shooting both. What we found as well is that because of the, the shape of the walls of the slug, the lighter slugs like the 23 grand slugs for example if you, they, they tend to have a slightly smaller diameter. There's a slight taper on the bearing surface. So the smaller slugs, you might want to try 218 caliber, and the longer slugs, you might want to try 217 caliber. But my main advice would be to get it a sample pack. I've asked Nick Nielsen to actually sell sample packs of various weights and various diameters of those slugs for you guys to try, and just shoot groups with each and find which one shoots the best. As far as weights go, if you can, I would suggest sticking to around 23 grain for a 600 millimeter barrel and 26 or 27 grain for a 700 millimeter barrel. This seems to be the sweet spot as far as your gun's uh, power capabilities. I find that when you optimize the power settings on your 600 millimeter barrel, you're going to end up with around 23 grains being your best weight. And with a 700 millimeter barrel, you're going to find 26 or 27 out of a standard gun being your best weight. Um, obviously, if you go slightly up or down and you find it's more accurate, I would then go with the more accurate option, but I'm just giving you a guideline of, of the ballpark of where you should be looking at when you choose to buy slugs. Another massive factor is the bearing surface of the slugs. Obviously, when you choose different weights, you're going to have longer or shorter slugs, and the bearing surface is very important because it's the part that engages the lands and grooves of your barrel. Um, this is important for a number of reasons. As I said, the engagement with the lands and grooves. If it's too loose and you have a really short bearing surface, the slug's not going to be perfectly straight or perfectly concentric. Uh, and if your bearing surface is too long and your slug's too big, you, you're going to have a lot of friction and that can also have negative effects. So bearing surface is important in that sense. Bearing surface is also important when it comes to the way the slug seats. Every single gun is slightly different because of the threads that attach the, the rod that uh, take the, the probe in. So your probe might be a few thousandth of, a, of an inch forward or back. And your barrel might also, the, the place where the land start might be a few thousandths of an inch forward or back. Um, so it's important the way that when you seat the slug, it's important the distance to the lands uh, that it is. If your slug is 
jam too much in the lands you might find that your probe distorts the slug as you seat it you might feel that it's a bit tight and if your lands are too far back and your slug's not touching them at all and it's got a bit of a jump you might find that it's not engaging the lands properly so this is where your the length might be really really important um, and that's the beauty of being able to test different weight slugs um, you can find something that works for you um, it's also the beauty of having something like a rat sniper slug which has a longer bearing surface for the weight so for example you can shoot a 22.8 grain rat sniper slug that has the bearing surface of a 26 grain nielsen slug so you've got some freedom there as well to test different weights with the same bearing surface so for example if you find a 26 grain slug nielsen slug works particularly well in your barrel but you want to have a lighter option you can get a lighter rat sniper slug with the same bearing surface and it might shoot just as well so just something to think about there as well an example of the testing of different slugs would be my friend Bob in the States who has a channel uh, Air Gunner Bob I'll I'll try linking below, below if I can remember he bought a 600 millimeter slug liner for his crown he tested I think 21 grain Nielsen slugs and they were spiraling completely out of control and he probably thought that the barrel had an issue and he went to a forum and and posted it and my friend Rulf from Air Hunters who had experienced the same thing basically went replied to Bob and said Bob just try longer slugs try using a slightly longer bearing surface and uh, Bob tried this and if you go look at his channel now you'll see him just drilling stuff at long range with 24 grain vomit knocker slugs 217 so there's a classic example of someone in real life who's not me who tried something after having bad results and found a solution to it and I truly believe that if you have a problem with your barrel I truly believe that it's something you can fix simply by testing different slugs and getting the power levels on your gun correct. Next question, why should I shoot slugs if my gun's already shooting heavy pellets very well? And the answer is you don't need to shoot slugs if you're happy with your heavy pellets and if uh, long range accuracy doesn't matter so much to you, then by all means stick to the pellets. But if accuracy does matter, I'm not talking about precision here, I'm not talking about group size, I'm talking about accuracy, where your group is placed. If that matters to you a lot, then you're going to seriously want to consider slugs. The reason I say this is because the slugs for any given weight will have a far superior ballistic coefficient. And obviously weight's important because your gun has a limit to the weight projectile it can shoot. Sectional density is a big factor in ballistic coefficient, but it's not everything. So you might think that a slug and a pellet of the same weight should have a similar ballistic coefficient, but it's not true. Um, another big factor in ballistic coefficient is the shape. And I'm afraid a pellet shape is just not conducive to high ballistic coefficient at all. The reason for this is partly that round nose, but a big factor is also the waist and the skirt. That waist around a pellet is there because a pellet is stabilized by that, that shape, that flare. Um, that the air, you know, it, it helps keep the skirt back and it helps stabilize the pellet. So the skirt and the waist is extremely important. And that unfortunately has a negative aspect in that there's a lot of turbulence around there and it, it really just pulls your pellet back. So you're going to lose a lot of your ballistic coefficient there. Um, but this also has issues when it comes to being shot at high speeds because you're going to have turbulence around that skirt area or that waist area that's going to cause that wobble to happen and you, you can't shoot your pellets over a certain speed. If you shoot a slug that's the same weight as your pellet, you can shoot it at a higher speed because there's no turbulence over a slug. There's laminar flow over the slug. The only place there's really turbulence is behind the slug and it has a lot less of an effect than turbulence around the waist of a pellet. So a slug you can shoot faster. You will notice that heavier pellets like a JSB Monster or JSB Beast you can shoot at much higher speeds in fact they only shoot well at much higher speeds and that's because the waist is not as deep so the flare is the the, the skirt is not as steep therefore you need more speed air, more airflow over that that skirt to actually get them to be perfectly stable and um, the drawback of this is that you do need to shoot them really fast you need to have perfect power settings to shoot a heavy pellet fast because the skirt and the, uh, and the waist is not as pronounced. The drawback of this is that you need to have your gun set up for extreme power to shoot this fast 
and it's not really ideal to do that. For example, this barrel shoots the monsters well, but it only shoots them well at 1,000 feet per second. If I try and shoot them at 960, it's absolutely hopeless. I don't like being constricted to something like that. Whereas slugs, for example, as long as they're fast enough for the airflow and the spin to stabilize it properly, which is basically anything over like 800 feet per second, you're gonna get really good results with them over a wider range of speeds and you're going to be able to shoot them much faster without them wobbling or destabilizing, which is fantastic. Um, I'll, I'll put in a graph over here to show you the BC difference between a slug and a pellet. It's monumental. There's a massive, massive difference. So don't think that just because you're shooting something heavy that it's going to have a far superior BC. Yes, sectional density does have an influence. So your heavier pellet will have a higher BC than your lighter pellet. But the slug is a big step up simply because of the shape. And just to be excruciatingly clear here i'm not against pellets i do believe they definitely have a place and i will definitely be shooting pellets out of most of my gun still i'm just saying that when you start making a pellet heavier and heavier and reducing the depth of that waist and making the skirt less pronounced you basically have a very inefficient slug so you're kind of defeating the point if you're going to go heavy i would say just skip the heavy pellet stage and go straight to a slug if you want to keep the power low for let's say pest control in a barn then stick with pellets but if you want to shoot long range use slugs there's a place for both and that's why we have designed barrels for both it's <laughs> the whole point the next really important topic that we need to look at is the power setting because i'll be honest with you without having the correct power setting you're just not going to get results that are going to make you happy the slugs are actually quite sensitive to this simply because of turbulent air behind the slug um, uh, it can have a very negative effect on your accuracy so you need to make sure your gun is tuned correctly and set up correctly like any firearm should be actually the theory behind this is like you know the way you do low development in a firearm where you play around with charge weight to adjust the harmonics and to adjust the pressure curve behind that projectile in selecting a powder for example that has the correct burn rate it's exactly the same in a in an air gun and specifically when you're talking about slugs but just because of the the similarities to bullets you should actually take the same concepts that work in a firearm and be able to use them in a gun like this shooting slugs so they should be the same so you can't obviously adjust the power of your gun by changing the amount of powder because you're not using gunpowder so the only way we can do this is by adjusting the hammer, by adjusting the valve setting, and by adjusting the regulator pressure. All these things together um, will have a positive or negative effect on how your gun shoots, and there's, a very, there's very much a sweet spot in between. Um, the big advice I would give you is to not have turbulent air behind your slug. And what this means is that higher rig pressures are going to be better because a high rig pressure allows your slug to accelerate quickly but then also allows your valve to be closed faster and what this is going to mean is that by the time the slug exits the barrel the valve is already closed and there's not so much turbulence behind the slug um, another way you can do this is by finely tuning fine tuning your hammer and you have to have the correct balance between your hammer and your uh, rig pressure because if your hammer's adjusted too high for a given reg pressure your your valve is going to be open for too long and you're going to have a lot of wasted air you can test this by for any given reg pressure basically set your hammer much higher than you think you might need it and then turn it down slowly and you'll see that there's a point at which your velocity stops climbing as you turn your hammer spring up you have to back it off from that point um, if you don't back it off you're going to be sitting with wasted air in other words you're going to be having more air coming behind your slug but you're not actually going to have any get any advantage from it and that's where some of these bad shot counts that you see come from it's just guns that aren't set up correctly um, for a particular projectile or you know for the power that you're trying to set it up as the beauty about this gun is that you can adjust the regulator you can adjust the hammer and you can adjust the valve at the front which is actually pretty amazing as well um, so as far as the hammer spring goes, I would say that if you're seeing issues, I would say try and back off your hammer spring one click, one or two clicks, and you'll probably see that group tighten up. 
Um, this is something I've seen very often. In fact, when I was in America last year, before Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, when I was with the guys from Iraq Veteran 8888, um, we made a video with an impact and a 600 millimeter slug barrel shooting 23 grand slugs. The groups were okay, they weren't great. And I told the guys, just turn it on one click, groups tightened up significantly. So this can make a massive difference. Here's a very important tip for you if you buy one of the slug liners. You must play around with the hammer spring and the regulated pressure and find the sweet spot. It's very, very important. Slugs are very sensitive to um, uh, air turbulence behind them when they leave the barrel. If they're just thrown off course a little bit, they tend to veer slowly and the groups will get bigger and bigger. They're not like pellets that kind of, after an initial stage of having turbulence behind them, they kind of right themselves and keep going. They really, really need the, the balance to be right and they will also probably be more sensitive to um, harmonic vibrations in the barrel. So you need to get it right. The upside of having a gun like the Impact to test with is that I can play around with it and I can determine whether a group that's not ideal is that way because of the barrel being bad or because of the gun just not tuned properly. In this case, those groups up there, okay, they're, they're probably acceptable for a, a slug barrel group. I can still cover them with my thumb from 50 yards, so that's really not bad, but it wasn't ideal. And I just literally put one step down on the hammer spring, reducing the power by, by about 10 feet per second. And there are my next two groups. Those are awesome groups. I'm extremely happy with that. And I'm, I'm guessing that these groups are like this due to the fact that there was less air behind the slugs. Um, I had a, quite a high rate pressure, 155 bar. Um, so the, with these groups back in the hammer spring down one, one click um, meant that the, the valve had closed before they left the barrel. And this obviously just allowed the slugs to leave the barrel without any turbulence behind them and just tighten up the group. So these barrels are performing really nicely. Um, this whole batch basically is shooting the same. This, the machine gets set for a particular batch and then they make the whole batch of barrels. So if one, if one barrel shoots like this, there's a 99% chance that the rest of the barrels are gonna shoot the same. So I'm gonna test another five or so barrels in the batch and if they all shoot like this, I know that the whole batch is good to go. And that's how barrel testing is done at FX. The ballpark settings I would give you is that if you're shooting 23 grand slugs out of a 600 millimeter, millimeter barrel, I would say put your rig between 150 and 160 bar max out your hammer spring and then click it down a couple clicks until you see your accuracy tighten up and leave it there. That should give you around 920 to 940 feet per second with the 23 grand slugs, which is more than enough. And I found that's kind of the sweet spot. If you're shooting out of a 700 millimeter barrel, I would keep the rig pressure the same, but I would say that you actually can max out the hammer spring a little bit more. And the reason for that is that by the time the valve closes, the slug isn't even at the end of the barrel yet. So I find you a little bit more forgiving with a 700mm barrel, while a 600mm barrel needs to be fine-tuned a little bit more in terms of the hammer spring in order to shoot well. Another big factor is the valve uh, stopper over here, this valve sitting at the end. Basically, there's a rubber ball in here that stops the valve from opening too much. And this, I found, is really important in terms of your velocity consistency and also with your group size. If this is open too much, you're going to find your groups are really bad and your, your velocities are really up and down. What I would do is I would put it on setting 4, which is like maximum, and then I would back it in slightly towards 3, little by little, until you see a group starting up, until you see the point at which your um, velocity becomes more consistent from shot to shot. And that's where I'd leave it. And that's kind of the ballpark figures that I can give you. But as I said, it might be different for every gun. So you have to experiment a little bit. I will tell you that fine tuning does make a big difference. I've seen it firsthand at the FX factory when you're at an indoor range with a gun in a vase where everything else is eliminated. You can kind of see those minor differences and how they affect things uh, more clearly. And I don't know whether it's more a case of harmonic tuning, in other words, how the barrel vibrates, or whether it's more a case of the air behind the slug. But I can tell you for a fact, even the slightest difference, one click on your hammer adjuster, or five bar reg pressure can make a massive difference to your group size. So you have to test it. Um, fine tuning is very important. And thankfully with a gun like this, you can actually do that.
Efficiency is something that's obviously also very important. I know a lot of people are gonna bring this up and say, well, I don't wanna shoot something heavy out of my gun because I'm only gonna get very few shots per fill. Uh, that's very true. If you're comparing, let's say, a 22 caliber pellet, 18 grain, to a 22 caliber slug liner, you're gonna see quite a significant loss in shots per fill. But the whole point of this gun is for long range shooting. So if your current long range setup is a 25 caliber shooting, let's say a 34 grain King Heavy Mark II, or a 30 caliber shooting a 44 grain JSB, those, both of those guns are gonna use more air than this gun, but give you a, lower, a significantly lower ballistic coefficient. A 22 caliber 217 23 grain slug out of a 600 millimeter liner, uh, I've tested it, will give you about 70 or so shots per fill. That's actually probably more than you're gonna get out of a 25 or 30 caliber shooting heavy pellets, but you're still gonna get a significantly higher BC out of the 22. So that considered, I think that the efficiency of this gun is very, very good. And even shooting out of a 700 millimeter barrel with a really pimped out gun, shooting very heavy slugs, 30 grain at like 60 plus foot pounds, I'm only getting, let's say 30 or 40 shots per fill, but even then, it's more than enough. On both days of filming recently with the guys from Air Hunters, we were out the whole day shooting pigeons and sparrows. I did not need to refill my gun even once. And that's with, that's like the maximum end of air consumption as far as 22 caliber slugs go. So if you're happy with, you know, 70 shots per fill and 22 shooting 23 grand slugs, I don't think you're going to have any issues at all with efficiency. An upside to the slugs as well is because they are so consistent in terms of weight and in terms of diameter, in fact, significantly more consistent than a JSB pellet, you're gonna have more consistent velocities as well. So you'll find that your shot string is flatter, whereas pellets, you might find some jump, the, your slugs are gonna be more consistent in terms of velocity, and that's also a big plus side when you're shooting at extreme distances, velocity matters. Now, probably the biggest question that we're gonna answer in this entire video is, the question of what kind of precision you can expect out of your slug liner. And this is a very important question because I think the traditional weak point of slugs has been their precision. And I firmly believe this is purely due to the fact that, um, that not enough effort has been put in by manufacturers of both barrels and projectiles and guns to really move this technology forward. I think this is the first time that a big manufacturer is actually trying to do this. And I firmly believe that it's very possible for slugs to outshoot, outshoot pellets. And I know that firstly, because that's what these barrels on my gun are doing now. But secondly, because we see it in firearms. Um, firearms are shooting quarter MOA groups at 100 meters. 22 rim fires are shooting tiny groups. So it's being done. It just hasn't been done yet in air guns. And for the first time, I think we're actually trying to push that forward. We have to remember that pellet technology has been evolving slowly but surely for many, many decades. When pellet guns were first invented or first became commercially available they weren't powerful enough to shoot slugs so pellets were the only option and that's been the technology that's been moving forward um 20 years ago if you think about 20 years ago you look at a group from 20 years ago with pellets you know before jsb came about and changed everything the groups weren't very impressive in fact it's very clear that slugs today after just a couple of years of testing will very easily outperform pellets 20 years ago and what does that tell you it means that it's a fact of technology having to be tested and having to move forward and not a fact of whether the projectile itself is good enough to give good precision the big thing here is that you need to play your part with testing and setting things up correctly and that's why i'm making this video if you buy a firearm you can't just chuck factory ammo in and expect it to shoot well because every barrel is different you can't even read on forums from someone else who's got the exact same gun and expect to get clear information about what's gonna shoot well. It's up to you to test different bullets and different powders and everything in that particular gun to get it shooting well, and it's gonna be the same with this. You're gonna to need to play your part. I can tell you for a fact that the barrels themselves are very, very consistent. I know this because when I went to the FX factory in January, we tested probably about 100 different barrels from the same batch, and every single barrel shot exceptional groups but it took some time to set the gun up beforehand to get the right ba balance in power, to get the right velocity for a specific weight slug. Once we did that, no issues. Obviously, they're gonna be very, very minor variations, so we did need to test 
different weight slugs and 217 and 218 to make sure you know found where the sweet spot was for that batch but once it was set up there were no issues and i can tell you that these barrels will be more consistent than pretty much everything else on the market the reason i say that is just because of the way they're made um, you get kilometers basically of steel tube that comes from germany it's polished it's smooth every single one of them is exactly the same they cut to length um, the crowning and the lead is done by a cnc machine 100 percent the same every single barrel and then the lands are pressed in from the outside so no tooling ever touches the inside and every single diameter is going to be exactly the same to the nearest basically probably half a hundredth of a millimeter the same can't be said about button rifle barrels so for example a lotha walther barrel because they use the same cutting tool uh, button to pull through um, many different barrels barrel number one out of a batch and barrel number 100 might be completely different because by the time barrel number 100 is made the button might be worn out so what you have is slightly different land groove dimensions and what you have is two barrels that need to be choked differently in order to get the same end result with the fx barrel the choking can be done exactly the same on every single barrel and the end result will be exactly the same a the wealth of barrel you don't get that same consistency and i know this for a fact because i've got about five or six lotha walther barrels and every single one of them has a different choke every single one of them has different land groove dimensions at the muzzle and so how am i supposed to know which one's going to shoot better with different projectiles the only way i can do that is to test different diameter head sizes or different diameter slugs until i find the perfect result and i'm afraid that's just that just doesn't cut it when you buy a gun you expect it to shoot well with the ammo that it's advertised to shoot well and that's what these will do for you Hammer forged barrels like TJ barrels and CZ barrels are, in my opinion, a step up from a button rifle barrel in terms of consistency. The issue there comes in the fact that a hammer forged barrel needs to have the crown and the, uh, the lead cut in afterwards. And the problem with this is that you can have very rough edges. It's very difficult to polish that perfectly. So a CZ barrel, for example, tends to be very rough and you tend to have to clean it very often. There tend to be a lot of fouling issues. I've heard only good things about a TJ barrel, so if you're going to get a hammer forged barrel, I would go with TJ. I've heard really good things about them, but I really do think that the technology that's in these barrels is a massive step forward. Another important thing to note is that slugs may not fully stabilize until they are a certain distance downrange, and this might affect your groups at close range. Uh, the way to kind of fix this is to make incredibly fast twist rates, but that has negative effects later on. Um, so what I would say is that I would really suggest testing these barrels at longer distances, let's say 50 to 100 meters. Um, I've confirmed this with guys like Tom Coston, who owns American Air Arms, someone who I really, really expect, who knows a lot about this and who makes fantastic guns. Um, Tom told me at Extreme Benchrest last year about his 22 caliber guns that he found that the groups are actually better at long range than they were at close range. And that's because the slugs took a while to perfectly stabilize as i said there's turbulence behind the slug as it leaves the barrel there might be a slight yaw but the on oncoming airflow will actually correct that as it moves down range and it will tighten up you see the exact same things in firearms actually my 260 remington for example shoots better groups at 200 meters than it does at 100 just because the those long boat tail bullets take a while to stabilize so it's not an anomaly um, so don't get discouraged if you're shooting 25 meter groups and they don't look good i would say take it long range and you'll see better results there with that said though if you want good 25 meter groups i would say use shorter slugs like 23 grain because the ratio of the weight to the uh, oncoming airflow that's actually stabilizing it there's, there's less uh, inertia which means that the slug's actually going to come right a little bit quicker so you'll probably see slightly better results with lighter slugs than you will with heavier slugs at close range but that might be reversed at long range just because of the superior bc of the heavier slugs with the amount of testing i've done with my barrels and the amount of fine tuning i've done and with my barrels having settled down after many many shots i can honestly tell you that my barrels are actually shooting just as well as pellets at close range um, my gun's tuned in a way that the slugs are exiting the barrel perfectly straight and flying perfectly straight initially. Um, but the real difference is going to be seen at long range. You're not going to really see much of a difference at close range between pellets and slugs. But because of the slug superior BC, I can promise you that they will outshoot uh, pellets at 
let's say 100, 150 yards, no problem, that's a guarantee. Just watch Utah Airgun's uh, ground squirrel hunt where Justin was a bit downcast at first about the uh, precision of the slugs when testing at 25 yards. He then went out and shot a ground squirrel at like 230 yards. So don't bother with close range, just go straight out and then come talk to me afterwards. You'll see the benefit. Speed is also a factor when talking about the wind and obviously the longer that pellets or slug is in flight for, the more it's going to be affected by wind. And because of the high BC of slugs, they're going to get your target much faster. A lot of people who used to pellets have commented on my videos and said, well, that can't be the distance you say it is because those slugs are getting there very quickly. Yes, they're getting there quickly, not necessarily because they're being shot quickly or shot fast, but because they're not slowing down very quickly. They retain their velocity much better. Um, I actually did a test recently where I shot uh, 100 meter gong with JSB monsters at 1000 feet per second and 30 grain slugs at 950 feet per second and despite the pellets having a 50 feet per second head start in velocity the slug still got there significantly quicker now that says something if a slug that if the average velocity of a slug over 100 meters is significantly more than the average velocity of a pellet that's being fired from the muzzle 50 feet per second faster that tells you about the difference in bc between the two and it will make a difference to both your elevation your drop and your windage so something to think about as well as far as the kind of uh, long-range precision you can expect uh, my 700 millimeter slug liner is probably shooting the same size yeah. group at 25 meters as i'm able to shoot with pellets out of some of my best barrels but it, i was able to shoot a, a sub moa group at 200 meters in the wind and i can tell you for a fact i cannot do that with any of my my pellet barrels or any pellets it's just not physically possible unless you have zero 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 wind and you have pellets that are exactly the same weight and exactly the same head size hit oh the terminal performance of the slugs was something that I was actually quite disappointed with at first. The first slugs I got from Nielsen Specialty Ammo, they had a hollow point that was too small and lead that was too hard. And when a high BC projectile that's got a pretty sharp nose uh, hits something and doesn't expand, it just pencils straight through and actually doesn't do much damage. And this is where the round nose of a Diablo pellet actually does quite well in terms of a, a non expanding projectile. But as soon as the softer lead and the larger hollow point was introduced i saw some beautiful terminal performance and there's obviously two things that contribute to this the first thing is uh, retained energy the energy that your projectile carries obviously slugs are usually a little bit heavier than pellets so they're going to carry more energy and the higher bc allows them to carry that energy for longer without losing it so retained energy is important but the the size and shape of the front of the slug that's hitting something is also a big factor and that's why you need a hollow point. I promise you now, if you don't have a hollow point on the slugs you're using, they're going to pencil straight through and you're going to be very disappointed with results in the hunting field. So you need hollow point slugs and you need a hollow point big enough to expand. Um, I would say that the slugs you get from Nielsen Specialty Ammo now should be uh, perfectly fine. They are working very well for me. And if you want to try the rat sniper slugs, which are basically hollow in the middle, you're going to get explosive results. Um, so if you're a hunter, it's definitely something to, to look forward to. So listen to me very carefully as I make this next statement. If you're seeing a fluctuation of your group size from really tight to pretty horrible to really tight when you first get your barrel, don't be too concerned about this. It's quite normal. The barrel needs to be broken in a little bit. I know I've said that these barrels are incredibly smooth and that no tooling ever touches the inside. And that's true. But what happens sometimes when the lands are pressed in is that you get micro fractures in the steel. And those fractures can be slightly jagged. If you look in a, in a bore scope, you look very closely at the lands, you can see some slightly rough edges. And these basically just need to be smoothed out a little bit. There's a number of ways you can do this. You can take a uh, bore paste like JB bore paste and you can uh, take a cleaning patch and a drill and you can just polish your barrel out. 
to kind of speed up the process but i haven't really bothered with this i've just shot my barrel enough um, until the point where it's properly broken in it takes about 100 shots or so and at that point you won't have to clean your barrel anymore um, this seems to be pretty unanimous across everyone i've spoken to who has slug liners including the guys from air hunters who've got like three different slug liners um bob in the states and ernest row um, all guys who are very experienced with the slugs they all say the same thing um, after a while the barrels settle down and you literally do not need to clean them anymore uh, here's a, a picture of actually this exact barrel um, as it is now i haven't cleaned it for hundreds of shots and it looks as good as new as the day it was made it is incredibly incredibly clean on the inside not a hint of fouling and it's also due to the just the profile of the barrel with the smooth lands there's no kind of sharp edges or anything that can collect lead uh, the lead is cleaned out with each successive shot so that helps a lot if you want to help yourself i would really suggest uh, lubing your pellets i've tried kind of everything i've tried uh, molly coating my barrel and my pellets i've tried hexaboron nitride which is like a, a white powder um, those didn't really work that well so i would not suggest going that route of the kind of dry lubes uh, the best thing for me is actually just been uh, taking oil any kind of oil actually works quite well but what i found works best is silicon oil you can get this at any hardware store like q8 or something like that just spread after you've bought your slugs just spray a little bit on them and that seems to be enough to uh, kind of smooth out the gap between the slugs and the the inside of the liner what can happen if your line is too smooth is that there's a lot of friction i spoke to a top bench shooter the other day who said that barrels that are over polished the lead actually kind of sticks to it like when you run your hand across a, a glass window pane um, versus a frosted window pane often the frosted window pane has less friction and um, the the lube on the slugs tends to just act as a uh, just a barrier between your your liner and the slug and just allows it to move smoothly without pulling off bits of lead so it helps a lot um, I was able to test this actually at the FX factory where we try different lubes, shoot 100 shots, then you look in the barrel with a bore scope and you assess the uh, fouling in the barrel and obviously you also assess the group size and this seems to be the, the best combination. So it's something worth trying. Aftermarket mods. Are there things you can do to your gun to make it shoot at a higher power or you know, maybe shoot uh better yes there are ernest rowe who's fx's head technician actually makes a high power kit for your impact and this is something that i used extensively in the build up to the release of the impact mark ii just to to experiment with what was possible and it seemed to work very very well the issue with this though is that you do have to modify your gun in a way that might void your warranty you have to in order to get the the, the, the plenum tube installed you've actually got to drill through your rear breech block and this will definitely void your warranty so i would not suggest doing that this unless you really are sure that you want to do it there's no turning back afterwards and with the prospect of the mark ii coming out which is going to have increased power it's probably unnecessary but if you want to do it go ahead it does work very well and Ernest has had some really incredible results the cool thing is that even with these aftermarket mods um, with the power really being pushed to the limit the gun is still not what I would call uh, too violent or overpowered um, it's still quite pleasant to shoot and I think this is probably down to a combination of the vibration dampening technology and the anti-bounce hammer you know the the uh, the rubber dampeners that are inside and the fact that the breech block is forward here so you don't really feel it at the back um, just everything is is much smoother on the impact you know if i compare this to uh, a day state air ranger which is at basically the same uh, power 60 foot pounds this one is significantly less violent um, so that's pretty cool but as i said you're gonna have more hold sensitivity when you've got more power so unless you really have to i would suggest keep it you know 23 26 grain around there seems to be the sweet spot you're going to get excellent bcs when you go higher there's a law of diminishing returns your bc is going to climb slightly but you're going to use a lot a lot more air and the gun's going to shoot more violently so i'd say unless you really want to keep it in that sweet spot of 26 grain 700 mil or 
23 grand, 600 more, and that seems to be the sweet spot. The other part you can get, uh, which might be of interest to you, is a high power regulator made by Huma. Uh, Huma makes a, a regulator that can be adjusted from, I think it's 140 bar to 180 bar. Um, to be honest, if you're shooting slugs, you're not really wanna, wanting to go below 140 bar. So this, this rig's made for those high pressures, so it might be something you wanna look at. Um, I'm actually, there's one on its way to me now that I'm gonna test in, in depth, but I will say that FX is doing a lot of work to make their regs more compatible with higher pressures without seeing any reg creep. So I believe the Mark II is gonna have improved, minor improvements on the reg piston and stuff like that to make it stay there at those high pressures. So I'd say wait for a few months until you see the results of the Impact Mark II at high pressures. And if you're still not happy, then take a look at the Humor reg and it might be something you, you're keen to look at. One of the biggest concerns for most people is that slugs up until now have been extremely expensive. And I of all people understand this because I live in a country with a weak currency. So for me to import slugs from the States, I not only have to pay for shipping of lead, which is expensive, I also have to pay import duties. By the time it gets here, it's completely unaffordable. So I know the struggle, but I also know that this is a supply and demand issue. Slugs are just not as popular as pellets at the moment but they will be soon and I know that the price is going to drop significantly um, because as soon as there's a demand for something, companies are willing to invest in equipment to make them in mass numbers. Um, the good news is that slugs are actually much easier to make than pellets. The process of swaging a slug is much easier and less complicated than the process of swaging pellets. So the end result is that I believe that slugs can actually be made much faster and at a much higher quality and way more consistently than pellets can be made. Um, the good news is that we have companies such as JSB and H&N, which are basically pioneers of the, the pellet industry. They are making slugs now. H&N's making slugs in 218 and 217 in a variety of weights. JSB is still working on stuff, but they're gonna be able to offer them to you at the same price as pellets, basically. We also have Nielsen Specialty Ammo, which basically I have to thank a lot for this. Nick has been incredible. He's helped me a lot. Um, so I would really suggest supporting Nick. He's bought uh, machines now to mass produce slugs. And Michael Hossack of, of Rat Sniper, who's also been incredibly helpful, also a pioneer of, of very, a very interesting slug design. He's bought a machine that I believe can make like a few million slugs a day. So they've already basically come down to uh, pellet cost. We just have to wait a few weeks for the, in, the machines to be installed and to get things into production. But it's problem solved not a concern there, which is great. Now I know a lot of you guys in the States and other parts of the world have been thinking this whole time, why am I only talking about 22 caliber? Why do I not talk about 25 and 30? Well, simple reason is that we're not allowed 25 and 30 caliber in South Africa without a license and it's a nightmare to get a license. So I'm not able to test these calibers here and I don't like talking about things I don't know a lot about. So I'm not going to say too much about the 25 and 30. Uh, the idea was to work on the 22 caliber first and then apply the same concepts we learned to the 25 and 30. Uh, the 25 is in production and I can't speak for myself about it, but factory results look good. And the guys from Utah Air Guns made a video recently where they were shooting at like extreme long ranges and seemed very happy with the long range performance. So yep, 25 caliber is available and we are working on 30 caliber as well. So 30 caliber should be available soon and a nine millimeter. As you've seen, the Impact Mark II will be available in nine millimeter. And the good news with the uh, rat sniper slugs is because they're hollow, Michael can make those slugs at very light weights, even lighter than a JSB pellet. So he can make them like 70 grains in nine millimeter. You can shoot them much faster than you can shoot a pellet and they're gonna have a superior BC and they're gonna open incredibly. So for a hunting setup, that's gonna be something that you're seriously gonna want to look at. And the fact that the, we can bring them down in price now is also really, really good. So guys, where to from here? Well, who knows? Just looking at the, at the amount that we've been able to progress um, over the past two years has been mind blowing. You know, we went from basically shooting groups that couldn't even stay on the paper at 40 meters down to groups the size of, of a fingernail, a quarter of an inch at, at 50 yards, which are basically exactly what pellets are doing. And then being able to hunt 
at distances that were never even conceivable for a 22 caliber uh, at long range. It's just crazy. I'm really happy with the way things are going and I have a feeling it's just going to keep progressing. The more demand there is for these uh, setups, the more uh, manufacturers are going to be competing to get the top spot. Um, FX has a head start, but I'm sure other companies are going to jump on the bandwagon. I will tell you if you're interested in another brand as well. I love FX, I support FX, but American Air Arms also makes great uh, products and they are also at uh, powers that are higher than the FX is capable of at the moment. So if you want like an 80 foot pound 22, American Air Arms Slayer is probably the way to go and I'm sh I think those are going to be available quite soon so I wanted to just mention that um, but yeah competition within the industry is great I'm sure we're going to see some incredible stuff I'll probably have to make another video in a few months time because of the advancements over even that short amount of time but it's really exciting and it's one of the things that keeps me going innovation is a good thing so thank you so much for watching guys I really appreciate it it's getting dark outside I've been talking for so long last thing I want to mention is that uh, there's something exciting coming up. I can't share too much, but I'm working on something with Utah Air Guns. I can't share too many details, but essentially, you know Utah Air Guns does all those custom guns? Well, they might be doing a custom gun with me, and it's not just going to be custom on the outside, it's going to be custom on the inside as well. It's going to be basically the exact setup that I'm using right now at home. It's really, really awesome. And I actually went to the FX factory and I handmade uh, barrels and I hand tested them at the range so if you buy one of those guns you're going to get a gun that's basically hand tested by me um, and if it's really bad then you know it's my fault <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm confident that it's not going to have any issues I'm confident that you're going to love it and keep an eye out for that it might be coming soon I'll let you know thank you so much for watching guys I know it's been a long video but I appreciate you sticking around I'll see you next time